Good morning, St. Hayden's. Morning. Um, as we uh, prepare to worship the Lord, um, uh, the words are up on the screen, but it's also found in your hymn book if you want to crack open that hymn book and sing harmonies. It is 486 in your hymn book. Speak, O Lord. Good morning, everybody. Well done for being here on the long weekend. <laughs> Give yourselves a clap. <laughs> oh, come on, you can do better than that. <laughs> uh, it's my joy today to uh, welcome um, somebody who's becoming a friend, I hope, uh, called Russ, who's uh, a firefighter. He's been in the uh, First Responders Games this this week, and I'm glad he's made it through to be able to be here today. And he's going to be sharing his testimony and his message uh, from the Lord for us later in this service. And this service is what we call a real life service, and I'll explain a little bit more about that later. But in essence, it's trying to understand about how our life is meant to be wrapped up in the Lord Jesus, and how the two are meant to be one, God's story and our story. So I, let me just open with a prayer to ask God to bless us this day, um, to welcome us into his presence, and just to teach us and be with us. Let's pray. My Lord, I just want to thank you for being with us this day. I want to thank you for the beauty of this day. I want to thank you for the beauty of our Saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ, for the beauty of your love and grace towards us and for drawing us together this day, in person or with us online. And I pray that you would join us, Lord, in fellowship with you and one another, by the grace and power and love of yourself through your Holy Spirit, given to us through your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. May we honour you and bless you with our worship today. May we welcome Russ and Val and Crosby and Oliver today, Lord, and 
Show them your love and grace and kindness in welcoming them amongst our midst. And Lord, I pray that you will speak to us through Russ and help us to hear with open hearts and minds your truth, your love and your message this day. We ask this in and through your powerful name, Lord Jesus. Amen. Um, just a little practical note for the service, with it being a real live service, we won't take an offering during the service. Um, if you want to give to the Lord uh, in that way, there's a plate at the back, um, just to the side of where you can see Wes standing at the moment. Um, and please just put your offering there as you, you leave. And I'll invite Wes to come forward now just to give uh, a notice, um, a joyful notice, we hope. I think better use the deck to make. It is my privilege and pleasure to read this notice. This notice is hereby given that Christopher David Barnes, now or formerly resident of this parish, intends to offer himself as a candidate for the holy office of a priest at the ensuing ordination by the Bishop of Rupert's Land or by his request and on his behalf. If any person knows any just cause or impediment for which the aforementioned candidate ought not to be admitted into holy orders, he is now to declare the same or signify the same forthwith to the Bishop of Rupert's Land. Wonderful. That's when silence is golden. Um, the service is the 22nd of August in the evening, but we'll give more details as we receive it uh, before that time. Can I ask you to stand with me as we begin and call ourselves to worship? Jesus prayed that we, the church, would be one just as he and the Father are one. Today, we offer our praise and prayer together as one body in Christ, through the power of the Holy Spirit. In harmony, let us glorify God, Father, Son, and Spirit. Amen. And let's continue our worship by singing the one, the church's one foundation.
our scripture of the day today. Let's say this together. Though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A cord of three stands not quickly broken. Thank you. Please be seated. Let me just say a prayer for the blessing of our children. Most are uh, away on, on holiday this, this weekend, but let me just pray a blessing upon them anyway. Lord, we thank you as ever that we are your family and that we are all your children. And amongst us, Lord, we are blessed with many children and with youth in our youth group. Lord, wherever they are today, on rest, in holiday, vacation, camps, Lord, I just pray for an anointing upon them a blessing in their lives, and that your angels would be around them, watching over them and keeping them safe. We pray that they will grow in the knowledge and love of you, their Saviour, and that we, as their church family, would watch over them, pray for them, and care for them. So we ask for your blessing upon them this day, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So as I mentioned, today is a, a real live service, and when we have these services, the idea behind them is that we find out what God is doing in somebody's life, how the love of Christ pans out in their life, in their work, in their family. And this fits in with our overall focus of wanting to know our real God. And if we know God, that should affect our lives and we should be a real church for him. And if we are a member of God's real church, then what we are meant to then do is live real lives for him. So in a way today is all about hearing about God's story and about our story. And in particular hearing from Russ today to see how God works in his life and how he shares the love of Christ uh, with others and however that pans out. Hopefully you've read his bio that we emailed out. He's a, a firefighter in this city in one of the most difficult areas of the city. Uh, he's got a passion and a love for the God that just inspires me and encourages me. And my hope and prayer today as he shares with you is that you will be encouraged and inspired and know the Lord Jesus that little bit much more. So can I invite Russ to come forward and to lead us further? Thanks, my friend. Microphone? Yep. Yeah, sounds good. Okay, I can't. Uh, I don't usually get a wireless mic. Got to really thank you guys. That I just finished playing uh, seven straight days of hockey, yeah. and uh, usually with Firefighters for Christ uh, missions, one thing that happens with being a part of these guys is we typically travel somewhere else. It's not typical that that we feel like we're on mission right at home, and and then often like in Belfast or wherever I've been in the world. Often there is a church service somewhere because we're international and, and then people are excited to hear that, that we get invited to speak. So coming actually post uh, fireplace games uh, really feels like a mission wrap up to me now. And it's, it, it actually only started to really hit me while, while church was going that uh, this is kind of perfect. Today's a closing ceremony. So I'm grateful and thankful to be here. I'm taking too much time off my own 15 minutes here. So uh, I'm going to say one quick prayer. I'm quite a talker, so I set the timer, because trust me, I could talk to you like Paul did till you fall out of the window and die. <laughs> that is true. Okay, I'm going to say one prayer I always do, okay? So pay attention to how I word this, too. Very simple, all right? And I do it for everything, and it really fits for where I'm headed. Follow it. It's very, very key for being a fireman and stuff, all right? Jesus, this is all you, zero me. All you, Zero me. Every word, not for me, for whoever's in here. In Jesus' name, amen. So one caveat I put out, uh, I think the uh, pastor or priest, whatever you call him, a brother, <laughs> a friend, uh, hopefully uh, uh, no forgiveness needed for what I say later. Um, but I also always put out that caveat that I am a fire chief south of here in, in Steinbach, and I'm a fire paramedic. And so I also speak like a fireman. So one thing I love to say as well as a fireman is sometimes things I say challenge, sometimes it encourages, sometimes it makes people sad, and sometimes, frankly, it causes people to want to head for the hills. They think this, that, I don't agree with that. And I think that's okay. I think one of the beauties in real brotherhood is that if, if whatever 
kind of pokes at you a little bit today, if there's something there that excited you, encouraged you, challenged you, you, you have my information. So you can contact me, you can take it further, you, you do what you want with it, all right? But being in a black and white job like I have, sometimes we're a little blunt as well, and we just kind of say things the way it is. And now I just asked Jesus, you heard, I, I, I asked him to speak, so I'm going to blame everything that comes out of my mouth now on him when I'm done. Uh, I'm, not a, I'm not a planner, so I come up blind, and I do that on purpose. I've learned over the years not to pinch the Holy Spirit. I have a really large testimony, and so there, will, there should be an attachment for you later uh, on a podcast with Bobby Delgado out of Houston Fire. That's, a, that's my larger testimony. It includes a battle with alcohol, a lot of things, being an adopted kid. It's far too large for here. But the beauty is, like the service, and I got to meet your priest pastor, uh, I think just over a week ago, we sat and we chatted, and I loved his heart. This whole thing about being real, like you're not going to represent Jesus, the Holy Spirit, the church, God, however you view this here, and then completely change, like the scriptures reference, when the man looked at himself in the mirror and he walked away, he immediately forgot what he even looked like. And that's, I want to give you just a small piece of where this started and where it was actually uh, Chris Barnes, the one you mentioned this morning, who's the one who met me. And at Church of the Rock, I had been invited to speak there with a police sergeant for a gathering of church um, heads that sort of strategize. And the, and the point of why they gather there was to say, you know, how would we reach firemen? How would we reach police officers? How would we actually reach emergency services? And I said something that I had never said before. And you could see where this would resonate. Like, whoa, I said something really big. And it, it came out. And, uh, and then I put a, a caveat. And I'm going to say it again because I think it was important because that's sort of how I met. And you're going to have to let this sit with you a little bit. Don't, don't get too uppity on this. There's a lot I could say here. But I said to them that primarily what you are doing a lot of times in the churches on Sunday, I begin undoing on Monday. And I said it twice. I said primarily what you're doing in the churches on Sunday, I begin undoing in the firehouse on Monday. Now, there I got, I was like, now let me quickly try to rapidly in the small 15 minutes start unpacking what I just said without you thinking, did he just check the church out? Absolutely not. And actually, he's going to brilliantly tie it in. We need church, okay? We need the brotherhood, the true fellowship that Jesus Christ left us with. But a big thing that I want to explain is that in the way we are here in the West, a lot of Jesus has become religious and it's become denominational and and honestly, what it's become to the firefighters is it's become unreachable. And what, I, what I mean is, they don't feel like they could come here and tell a certain spot. So they think that church in Canada, and probably church in the U.S., and church for the most part in the Western, is that it's a set of things before you're ready and good enough to come here. And instead, we're not bringing them a Jesus that is sitting there with them in every situation. No matter the mire they're in, no matter what we would call sin, which we don't really get to, only God calls sin, right? But we, we have an idea of what we think is good and bad, but the point is Jesus is with everyone, everyone. And I've used that from my generation. I mean, the, the only horrific example I can think of uh, growing up is somebody like Adolf Hitler and what happened in World War II, which was just monstrous. And yet somehow our Jesus, who just, I might get, if you see emotion, I mean, I love Jesus so much. I just can't believe how much he loves us. He loved Hitler somehow every day. And I don't mean any disrespect to the Jews or things that happen. I think you understand what I'm saying. Somehow that Jesus, who manages to get into everything and just be with the people, like the woman at the well, and just kind of like, hey, don't talk to me right now about what you've done. I, I totally know. I just want to be with you. I love you. I'm proud of you. Now, when we bring the firemen that Jesus, and I sit on the front bumper. I work in the Osborne Village, all right? So it's like he mentioned, it's pretty wild. If you ever go by there at nighttime, we have the doors open. We get so many calls, there's no point in trying to, <laughs> trying to rest. We take turns. Um, but we sit there in the village. Now, that's probably one of the most... Um, out there areas of Winnipeg, right? There's everything you can think of going on. And I'll tell you something, with all of these things, we also look at a lot of things, and we think, um, you know, why are people choosing this? 
Why are people choosing all these things that we would just blanket say, well, it's madness. It's crazy what's going on. And, and truthfully, even I'm raising kids, there are certain things that I didn't even predict uh, becoming a dad that I would have to face. So I will say there are some human ideas out there that I am perplexed with. But the Father has shown me many, many times, don't go there with judgment, though. Don't do it. You love them. I am the judge, and one day I will judge. You love them, and you bring me to them. And then when I ask the Father for strategy, well, how in the world would, would we do this? Well, this is something that bugs me. And that's probably what I brought to Church of the Rock that day as well, out of strategy. Because it is a war, and it's a strategy. And again, firemen, I'm growing and learning like we all are. So some of the, some of the things I'm, pon- I'm almost pondering in front of you right now. I don't have this conclusively. But I look at people, especially even going by in the Osborne Village, and I think, why out of all these things, if there's a hundred options that we would call as madness to find identity? So we just decide, you know what, I don't feel good, so I'm going to do this, this, and this, and this. You know, I used to drink a lot. That's in my testimony. It's an alcoholic. So I was choosing that out of probably hurt and pain, and it's the escapism. I can't handle this. Now, a lot of my brothers in the fire service, and he gets it coming from police, full of booze. At the World Police and Fire Games this past week, whew, there was some champion drinking, I will tell you that. If there was awards for how much and how fast some people can drink, there would have been a lot of awards handed out. And also, that shows you what happens when we get out of our uniform and we're allowed to not be involved in trauma all the time. We see people die every day. I see people die multiple times a day when I'm working, for real. I barely get through a shift ever and come home to my wife and tell her somebody didn't die. I also bring people back all the time now, especially with fentanyl. That's also weird. They're completely dead. Then they wake up and argue with me. No, I'm not dead. Then I tell them, does your chest hurt? Well, yeah. And then we show them, well, I was pumping my 210 pounds on your chest. And they don't believe you, right? But here's a, here's a, here's a good challenge. And I'm going to switch gears because, wow, that time flies. Um, why is Jesus no longer an option? Think about that. Why is Jesus, out of all these things, like I said, there are a million things that truthfully we know when the Father comes in holiness, it will be madness. But remember, in your own lives, your own thoughts held captive to Christ, how much is not even close to worthy under that holy God? We will probably try to bury our heads right through a concrete floor if God's holiness came into this place. Because we're all absolutely pitiful when it comes to worthy by that standard. It doesn't matter how hard we try. That's why Jesus died. Right? But why is Jesus in Canada no longer an option for these guys? They're going to look at that list of a hundred other things to try and feel full. But it's because we're bringing them the wrong Jesus. Okay? And I don't, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, like I had mentioned with your priest, I, I love denomination when it comes to, well, I kind of have an idea how you're going to worship, right? So whether it's an evangelical church or an Anglican church like this or a Catholic church or a Baptist church or a non-denominational church, or, but there's a big difference between choosing to come here and having to come here. There's a big difference between me choosing to read my Bible and I have to read my Bible. Last I checked in the Bible, there wasn't a whole lot of reward for reading my Bible. I don't, I don't see that. There were people who, who went through an era where they didn't have a Bible. And the other thing is, I don't want to get into what Jesus always did with churches, because it sure didn't look good in the Bible. So I don't want to say that he's coming here to St. Aidan's and telling you guys, whoa, whoa, whoa. But we do have letters written in Revelation that really aren't very good. Everybody just hangs on the church in Philadelphia a little bit, uh, because they're like, well, at least they got a little bit of a pass. And then when Jesus did show up, he went and trashed the temple, and he went after the religious leaders of the day. Because in my opinion, okay, and this is a big statement for me, Jesus is a, is a non-religious, non-denominational, he just is. And I love his claim. Imagine if you had the claim, who are you? I am. What do you mean you are? I just am. And I love you. I'm proud of you. And when I do that with firemen, I tell you, what a difference. Now, perfect piece of testimony. Switch gears, and this will go to the hockey team. I'll tell you what I was like this week, all right? Because I am the director of Canada for Firefighters for Christ. 
You betcha. Firefighters for Christ goes to every World Police and Fire Games in the world. Let's see if this microphone holds up. And they, uh, they have a big presence there. I inform them I'm on the board out of Los Angeles. I travel a fair bit, speak a fair bit. Um, I told them that for this whole, it's actually been a six month jersey. I am Firefighters for Christ. I love Jesus with, my, with everything. He is everything. There is nothing in his place, even close, all right? But I told the board this week, and for six months, this was me. You can laugh. Uh, I am a polar blaze. That's who I was. I was Winnipeg Fire Polar Blaze on a hockey team. And I told the board very respectfully, there was no argument, they trusted me. I said, I won't be wearing a Firefighters for Christ shirt. I'm not going there with an agenda to hand out challenge coins or lead my hockey team to Jesus Christ. But what I am going to do is I'm going to play hockey the way I'm going to ask Jesus to play it for me. I'm going to ask Jesus to be me in the dressing room. I'm going to ask Jesus to take everything the same as I did for this service. So every day I did that. And, and I'll tell you something. All seven days as we got to the actual tournament play, what started coming out of my mouth every single time on the sidebar conversations, there was a Jesus conversation with a team of 18 people, including somebody who came from Switzerland. So we had a Swiss goalie as a backup. And their world got rocked. They cried. There were times in the dressing room, I had the whole dressing room crying. And I got told by the end of day seven, to my shock, I wasn't trying, I was just trying to be like Jesus as a hockey player. And I got told by the team leaders as they introduced me to their family, that here, this is Russ, the one I told you about, he's the one who led the team. He's the one who led the team. I wasn't the captain on the team. I wasn't named assistant when we started to play. But on the bench, on the ice, you should have heard what other teams said about me. Australia, Iceland, the Ukraine, LAPD. There was one that went to our team leader and said, what's with the Ma Randy Macho Man guy? <laughs> huh? This mustache. I'm not even a mustache guy. So this was, this was all, by the way, the pit vipers, the hat, and the mustache, and the hair was actually all part of hockey. And I believe that it was a strategy from Jesus. It was a strategy from the start that I would never be forgotten. And not only would I never be forgotten, but I'd never be forgotten by all those countries. But here's the thing, and my mentor from Los Angeles City Fire Department, John White, who has now passed away, 44-year LA veteran, said, you be the loudest, you be the proudest, you be the fastest, you be the fittest, you do things hard. And then when it turns around, and like the Bible said, always be ready to give a reason. And then all credit to Jesus. I never, I never took credit ever. People said, what is with you? By the end of some of those days, and I said, I can't take credit for this. I met Jesus in a river in Austria, and he changed my life. That should get you excited to listen to that testimony as well. I just said I met Jesus in a river in Austria, and I literally met him there, so listen to it. It's a very special testimony, and it really happened, all right? It changed my life. But the thing is, I was a polar blaze. And I said to Mallory, this is very interesting, because I honestly have never done it this, this way. And there's a lot more to this. I'm, I'm riddled full of mental illness at the moment as well. Recently diagnosed with PTSD and clinical depression. So there's a lot going on from what's happened to me in Osborne Village. And I gave a kidney last year as well to a fireman, kidney donor. So I, my, my world's kind of been rocked. So even the fact that I could speak to you in this capacity makes no sense. But Jesus. But to me, it's Jesus plus Zippel. It's Jesus plus Zippel. And when I tell guys in the station that I'm not religious, that's the first thing that gets their attention. They say, well, of course you are. You're the, like, you're the firefighter for Christ. I said, it's not religious. It's not religious. And if I am ever religious, please tell me. I need to stop. And I have nothing wrong with religion, like if it's done in the right thing. But Jesus is freedom. He's love. He's grace. And he doesn't stand apart from the people. He doesn't look at it from a distance and say, this is madness. He goes in and he touches people, like on the head. And he, and he holds them and he goes through and he says, I just love you. I get chills under here as I say that. It's an unfathomable thing that he does, right? Just unfathomable. Unfathomable. 
So I just wanted, kind of like a Sunday school teacher, this, little, this reminded me of the props, because they used to always have a prop if they wanted you to remember something. And I wanted you to remember like this. I'm in every picture in the World Peace of Fire Games with these crazy things on. I can barely see you guys uh, because they're so dark. I tripped all over the ice after games. We'd shake hands with them on. I'd wear them for warm-up. I set a standard, this, this horrible mustache, uh, and now I don't know what to do with it because it's August and pretty dark. Can you imagine if I shave it off? It's been there for six months. Um, but that was all designed to get noticed, but for the king. And I promise you, I got noticed. Did I ever get noticed? And that last day, mega tears in the room, everybody crying. And I shared how the hockey team carried me through one of the darkest periods of my life because that's where I'm at right now. So it's not something you can carry for me. I've never had a switch go off. I'm the most positive person ever. How would I not be? We have Jesus. But you know what? Jesus is leaving me with the system right now in therapy. And Jesus, honestly, relying on Jesus and people praying for me, I took my trauma life way too far. I ignored the systems that were there thinking I didn't need it. That with an all-powerful, almighty God, I could just pray or do more devotions. And right now I'm in major brain injury, and that is not working. And so I'm in major therapy, and I'm going to a, an actual uh, healing retreat center through the IFF. In, in BC, September 11th. Pretty noticeable day, the day the towers came down. So September 11th, I'm flying, and I'm very hopeful that there's gonna be a turn in our lives. Not to ever get me back, but to have that new journey of, of the new me, okay? There was a verse that you guys were showing. I don't know where, where, you, where you put it up, but I just wanna end on it. I know I'm just over 15, because I, I felt the timer. And I like this out of the message, because I like it. And I like this church. So if this church is where you go to church, I am not taken away from you go to church. But you make sure that you're going to church because you're meeting Jesus at church. This has nothing to do with this being an Anglican church or a Baptist church. I grew up in a Mennonite church, EMC. And not going to church was not an option. <laughs> um, but I encountered Jesus somewhere else. And then I really went to church. And that, for 99% of people, they need to encounter Jesus Christ. So I tell my guys, you will encounter him if you start asking. So if you believe me at all in who I am and the difference, then you ask God who he is. But then get ready. If he shows up, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? And their hearts burn when I speak like that. That's a Jesus that accepts them unconditionally right there. There's nothing attached to it and also makes it easy for me. I don't have to come up with some kind of brilliant message to try and get people to say some kind of prayer that we all know, does it last? It's a tough world. So I gave this verse because I like it because it uses the word grow up. I probably said it to my kids once in a while. In a word, what I'm saying is grow up. And this is the end of Matthew 5, which is such a great passage on kind of the guts of this is who I am. Good luck following this. <laughs> it, what I'm saying is grow up. Your kingdom subjects now live like it. Live out your God-created identity. Live generously and graciously toward others the way God lives towards you. But in a word, what I'm saying is grow up. Your kingdom subjects now live like it. I don't know what you all do tomorrow, but I do know his heart. And I'll tell you something. He wants you to be, he wants to lead you in being, at least trying, right, to be like Jesus Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then even in here on Sunday, all right? And he wants it to be real where you are. You don't just go through the motions here and be like that person who forgot. And I'm not going to get in length, but you'll all understand what I said of what COVID did to us in the West. Whew. Let's, not even, let's not even rehash what we saw, what people did. Let's forget it. Let's hope it never happens again. But let's learn a lesson that we have to be like Jesus 24 hours a day. And when we mess it up, because we sure do, then we just say, I'm sorry. I'm trying. But that sure wasn't like the Father. Oops. But at the end of the day, credit, right, to the Father. And again, I'm a firefighter for Christ. 
But over the last six months, Polar Blaze, I've told Mallory I've never had impact, which shocked, honestly shocked me a bit. I've never had impact like I did at this time for Firefighters for Christ or for the Kingdom than I did this time. And not once did I try to bring a challenge coin or go with a scripted or I'm going to pray for the game. And instead, the father finally said, finally, you're letting me do it. Get the heck out of the way. A brain injury, I'll tell you, is helping me. Because it just makes me angry. I'm like, you don't even want to know how I felt about coming here this morning. Because every day is a struggle. But the spirit now has probably proved that he took over. This was all him. So you have to also know it was all him. So for each one of you, it's also for you. This isn't for me. So if he gave you something, that's for you. So now I'm probably 20 minutes. i got to stop. But any, anyways, love you guys. And again, however he puts up that, um, the, the testimony for Bobby Delgado out of Houston, take a listen. Uh, I've, I've been told by other firemen uh, across the globe that it's a very good testimony. I don't like to listen to myself, so... <laughs> So I don't, I don't get very far going back. So I really appreciate this time. And in the future, if there's more time with you guys, I would love, love to pour out more of, uh, of this heart that I have for Jesus. Thanks for having me. Let's just pray for us. My God, my Father, our Savior, our friend. We thank you for our brother, Ross, Lord. We thank you for his openness, his honesty, for his vulnerability, Lord, and for just sharing you with us today. We thank you that he has shared you with others this past week, and we pray that your Holy Spirit continues that work in the hearts and minds and ears of those whom he has spoken to, whom he has lived out your love in front of. But Lord, we want to pray for an anointing upon him. We want to pray for your healing power upon him. Lord, we want to pray that you work in his weakness, making your strength full in his weakness. Mm. We want to pray that your grace is sufficient for him in all that he does. We pray that you equip him daily in his work. It is a truly demanding, incredible job that he does. We pray that you strengthen him and equip him. We pray that you support his whole family. It is hard to be the family of one of the first responders, mm -hmm. never knowing what they're going through in the day. So give them strength and encouragement and support. And Lord, we pray for a great healing of his mind and his heart from PTSD, from this healing retreat on the 11th, Lord, and just in his daily life. Anoint him, bless him, and use him. And thank you for bringing him here this day. And may this blessing be upon his whole family. We ask this in and through your name, Lord Jesus. Amen. 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 Thanks, brother. Thank you, man. Can I borrow your glasses? Yeah. <laughs> it makes you feel a little bit more confident. It does, yeah, and you can't see people. <laughs> <laughs> so what I'd like to do now is just ask Mel to come and do the uh, reading uh, for us before we uh, sing in worship. Uh, just to put this reading into context, um, uh, written by Solomon, he must have been a fireman, at least a fireman, <laughs> or a first, first responder. Uh, in the previous verses, he's talking about the world and the oppression that's going on in the world and some of the things that probably Russ sees. And this is a wonderful suggestion for how to fix it. A reading from Ecclesiastes 4. Uh, verses four and uh, nine to uh, twelve. Two are better than one, because they have a good return for their labor. If they fall down, they can help each other up. But pity those who fall and have no one to help them up. Also, if two lie down together, they will keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone? Though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A cord of three strands is not quickly broken. This is the word of the Lord.
Our next reading is from the book of 2 Samuel. Uh, this is God speaking to King David through uh, Nathan the prophet. 2 Samuel 7, starting at verse 9. I have been with you wherever you have gone, and I have cut off all your enemies from before you. Now I will make your name great, like the names of the greatest men on earth. And I will provide a place for my people Israel and will plant them so that they can have a home of their own and no longer be disturbed. Wicked people will not oppress them anymore as they did at the beginning and have done ever since the time I appointed leaders over my people Israel. I will also give you rest from all your enemies. The Lord declares to you that the Lord himself will establish a house for you. This is the word of the Lord. And before I just share a a reflection uh, from God's word in the gospel and linking to what Russ has shared, just to let you know we will be emailing out to all of those on the circulation list the um, podcast that Russ mentioned, and we'll also put the link on the the website. Uh, So if you want to follow up on that, and I would encourage you to do so. It It is a good testimony, so please do that. But yes, I'd like to to sort of share some thoughts and to link what Russ has shared with us and about the Lord Jesus um, to us and our lives. If we are going to be the real church, living real lives for the real God, how do we be Jesus every single day to those that we meet? How do we have him in our lives? The one thing that stood out for me in what Russ shared was how much he loved the Lord Jesus, how much he has put his trust in the Lord Jesus. And if you like, the cord of Russ's life is entwined with the Lord Jesus. It's a cord that can't be broken. It's a cord that ties him to God for eternity through the faith that he has in Christ Jesus. And so I want to start by asking us, and this is a picture of Russ training at the fire station, by the way. Thanks for giving it to us. I appreciate that. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) That was pre-moustache days, obviously. But what do we put our trust in? You know, what do we, you know, if we look at surveys online, if we go to Google, we'll see a list of these things, none of which in and of themselves are wholly bad. They're natural things that we will trust and rely on in life. Ross talked about other things that people put their trust in, the things that he sees in Osborne Village, his own admission that the trust was in alcohol for a period of time. And he shared how the first responders like to drink. I would like to echo that from my days in the police. I went to Scotland once on a negotiator course and they asked me to go out for a bucket. Naively, I didn't know what that meant. In England, he said, do you want to come out for a pint? And that's literally a pint of beer. And the police might have four or five pints. But when they say come out for a bucket in Scotland, they mean a bucket equals four pints minimum. And they will have three or four buckets when they go out for a drink. So you can do do the math on that. But people put their trust in things because they can't cope in life. They don't understand life. And they don't have an answer to the reality of death. We might have good lives. We might have great times. But we can't explain or escape the reality of death. Again, Russ shared how he sees that every single day in his work. It is so final and it is a reality. What do we trust that can actually overcome the reality of death? What can we trust in life that helps us cope with the things we see and the things that we face on a daily basis? So think about what you trust. And then I want you to answer this question in your own heart about the cord of your life. Where is the cord of your life leading? Based on what you trust in life, where is that taking you in life? What is the direction? And how strong is that cord of life? And how long is it? 
God tells us in his word that we'll be blessed if we have 70 years, incredibly blessed if we have 80. We've only got to look at the news apps on our phones to see people dying every day at younger ages. Where is the cord of life going? Russ knows where the cord of his life is going. His life is entwined with God through the Lord Jesus. His life, his cord will not end in physical death. It will go beyond that. He mentioned in his testimony there that it's not for us to judge others. That is God's domain. And Jesus tells us something very clear, that wherever our cord of life goes in this world, whether we believe or trust in him or not, our cord of life will all, for all of us, will end before God at one day that the Bible calls the day of judgment, where we have to give account for our lives. Whether we believe in God or not, whether we trust him or not, the cord of our life leads to that point. And there are two outcomes when we are knelt before the Lord. And Jesus tells us this very clearly, and we cannot dismiss Jesus's words. I'm going to show you a verse in a minute that none of us will like. Some of us will think it's harsh. Some of us will think it's too much. Sometimes the church tries to explain this away. But if we try and explain away Jesus's words, we explain away his truth, and we can explain away even our lives. Jesus says these words to some who will kneel before him on that final day. Depart from me, you who are cursed, to the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Horrible, harsh words. Words that we don't like to hear, but we cannot dismiss. These are words of one of the option where our cord of lives can take us. Wonderfully, because God loves us so dearly and has given us his son, there is an option that is before us that God implores us to take. And for us to understand that, we need to understand God a little bit more. We need to understand the cord of his life. This year, we're thinking of God as the triune God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, so that we can understand and know our real God even more. He is the eternal triune God. And his word tells us very clearly that he is the true God, the only God, He is the living God and the eternal King. This means he has no beginning. He has no end. There is no power above him. He is ultimately sovereign and powerful and knows everything. And he loves us, as Russ is saying, so intimately, so completely and so dearly. And he loves us because he made us. He created us. He knows us well. And there's this beautiful verse in the Psalms Before we were even born, he formed us in our mother's womb and he knew the days, the length of the cord of our life before we were even formed or born. That's how much he knows us, loves us and understands us deeply and intimately. And the cord of his life, of the Father, embraces and goes out also to the Son and the Holy Spirit. And he shows us how much he loves us through Jesus, the eternal Son of God. Jesus, as part of the triune God, is equally eternal, equally God. He has no beginning. He has no end. He was there at the beginning of our creation, and through him, everything was made. Everything that has been made was made through Jesus Christ. And yet the cord of his life brought us him to this earth as one of us. He came to live a life on this world as one of his own creation, as a man, still fully God. And the cord of his life was cut abruptly short at about 33 years of age because he gave his life for us. He loved us so much. And he did this so that he would take on himself that judgment, that accountability that we all will face one day. And he died a death that he did not deserve so that we don't have to face death in that way. 
death can actually become the doorway, the gateway to our eternal life with God if we have faith in Jesus Christ. That's what the Lord Jesus has done for us. And God showed his power and the truth of this message by not just asking his son to give his life, but by using his almighty power to raise Jesus from death to life, defeating the power of death, defeating judgment, defeating sin. And he loves us so much that if we put our trust in God through Jesus Christ, we don't have to face death or that judgment day in that way. We can actually know eternal life and our relationship with God. And so what I want us to hear today in all of this is that the chord of God's life, God's story, the chord of our life and our story is actually meant to be interwoven. We were made to be with God in our eternal relationship. We are meant to be wrapped up in him, tied to him, belonging to him. And that's what we see in those beautiful verses that Mel read that all of a sudden the length of the cord of our life can be eternal and it can be immensely strong, even unbreakable in the Lord Jesus Christ if we put our trust in him. And so we see this beauty lived out in Russ. He hasn't had life easy. He has a traumatic, demanding job. He's had massive challenges in his life. He's overcome alcoholism. He is working in this issue with PTSD and the brain injury through all the trauma that he has seen. And yet Jesus is there and real for him and is his strength. And I'm absolutely sure he strengthens you through your family and through many other ways, my friend. And so Russ, when he comes to that day where he is knelt before the Lord Jesus Christ to give account for his life, he will hear these other beautiful words from the Lord Jesus, the other option. Come, Ross, you are blessed by my Father. Take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. That is what God intends for us. That is what he wants for us. But we need to know the full truth and put our trust in him. These are words that Ross will hear. These are words that I want all of us to hear on that day that will come. But as those adverts that on television where they're selling these incredible things say, there's more, there's more. (laughs) There's not just two chords to tie together. God wants us to be in a three chord relationship. Us, our chord of life wrapped up with Jesus and those chords wrapped up in the people of God, the church of God. We read, or David read, about King David, not himself, uh, from that passage in Samuel. And King David was being reminded by God through the prophet Samuel of his past, his present, and his future. He reminded David where he came from, that he was the least in a big, big family. Did they have Mennonite families those days? (laughs) But he was one of many, and he was the least, and he was a shepherd boy, and he became king of Israel. And through God, he united the kingdoms. And he told him that God told him that he would bless his kingdom with peace in his last reigning years. But then he wanted him to go further back in the past and look further forward in the future, remembering his ancestors in Abraham, Isaac, and the covenant God made, saying that the people of Israel would be a blessing to all nations, and to look forward to how that would come about through the Messiah. That Messiah is Jesus, and he's brought in this new era of the people of God, the body of Christ, Christ as the head. And we hear and see in Russ's life the example of how the people of God is not just in the church that he physically attends on Sunday, but is in his workplace. It's through Firefighters for Christ, where he takes the church, he takes Christ, he takes his brothers and sisters into his everyday life. I shared with you in the police how my friend and I, a colleague in the police, we started a church in the police. We had a worship service once a month in building church, in police buildings. And we created cell groups and prayer groups to support one another. 
Because honestly, the church couldn't always cope and understand what first responders went through. And I'm sure you face that on a regular basis. And so you look to create and be church wherever God has put you. And so my encouragement to all of us is to follow Russ's example, to follow Jesus' example, and to take the church, to take your brothers and sisters, take the truth of Christ to where God has placed you, in your home, your community, your place of work, wherever it actually is. And the wonderful truth of that is that we have the strength of three. We have the people of God supporting the individual children of God, wrapped up in the cord of life of Jesus Christ, which is eternal. And we're told in the passage in Ephesians that that gives us immense strength. If we're all joined together in that way, by the cord of life, the cord of the love of Jesus Christ, we can grow, we can build ourselves up in the love of Christ, as each of us does our part. And that's important, we all need to do our part. Every time one of us doesn't fill the calling that God has put on us within his church, the church becomes that much more weaker. The length of our cord suddenly is eternal. And the length of the cord of three is a beautiful thing. We read in the book of Revelation how the church is described as the bride of Christ. And how after that day of judgment of accountability, there will be this wedding feast in the new heaven and the new earth where we are all joined together to the bridegroom of Christ in that place where there is no sin, no denying God, where there is no pain, no suffering, no illness, no tears. And where we are exactly as we are meant to be in the bosom of our Father, God Almighty. So my friends, I want you to consider this. I want you to think about the cord of your life. Where is it leading? How long is it? And how strong is it? What are you putting your trust in? Are you fulfilling the cord of life within the people of God that God has assigned to you? Is your cord of life wrapped up with the Lord Jesus? If you are living on your own without reference to God, without giving your life to Christ, you are naturally putting your faith and trust in something else. It could be something that helps you, it could be something that damages you, but it will not be something that can overcome death or explain away your life when we are before God. If you are wrapped up with Jesus and your cord of life is wrapped up with him, you are strong and you are secure in the love of Christ. Make it stronger by wrapping it with the third cord of the people of God, because you are not alone. We are meant to be together. So where is the cord of your life right now? Amen. Let's just take a little moment of silence just to let God speak to us through Russ's word, through his scripture, through what I've just shared. Lord Jesus, just come and speak to us through the power of your Holy Spirit. In our hearts, convict us, encourage us, direct us. Show us the Lord Jesus. I'm just going to ask you now to say these prayers. You can either just keep your eyes closed and echo them in your heart as I say them, or you can look at them on the screen and say them aloud with me. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, you come to us, but we do not recognize you. You call, but we do not follow. You command, but we do not obey. You bless us, but we do not thank you. Please forgive us and help us. Lord, you accept us, but we do not accept others. You forgive us, but we do not forgive those who wrong us. You love us, but we do not love our neighbours. Please forgive us and help us. Then, Lord, we ask that you bind us together in unity as one body, in the one spirit, 
in the one faith under the one God and Father of all. Join us as the whole body held together by every supporting ligament, growing in love and action as we each do our part. Lord, help us. For these reasons, may we kneel before you, Father, from every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. We pray that out of your glorious riches, you will strengthen us with power through your spirit in our inner beings, so that Christ may dwell in our hearts through faith. And we pray that we, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ, and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that we may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Amen. Thank you for being with us today. Thank you especially to Russ and all the family. Um, please know that there are prayer teams and anointing teams that will be available in that side of the church, the chapel. Please avail yourself of prayer ministry uh, if you do need it. Let us just say a closing prayer and blessing together. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. And so may God, the Holy Trinity, bind you together, make you strong in faith and love, defend you on every side, and guide you in truth and in peace. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Before we sing our closing hymn, just to remind you that there'll be refreshments at the back of the church, I'm sure... Ross will be okay to stay around and have a chat with people. Uh, if he's not and he runs away, uh, 911 gets fast first responders. <laughs> this, is 12, this is 12 stations districts. 12 stations districts. <laughs> Who won't, we won't get Ross in that case. <laughs> but let us stand and let us sing to God be the glory and let us mean that in our hearts today.
feel the, the need just to say a, a prayer for our first responders. Um, they are amazing people who give of their lives every day, whether it be the medical staff, paramedics, ambulance, firefighters, police. Um, it is an uh, occupation that naturally causes people to turn in on themselves because it's not always understood what they actually do and how they actually cope. And they are under a fire a lot of the times from misplaced criticism, from ignorance, and from just pure stupidity, if I'm being honest. So I just really wanted to pray for Russ, the firefighters, and the first responders. Lord Jesus, you bring love, you bring order, you bring beauty to this world. And in the chaos that exists, you give us people, Lord, who seek to keep the peace, who seek to promote health, who seek to save life. And Lord, they are often under attack in different ways, from the people that they're trying to help, from politicians, from people who don't understand their roles. Yes, Lord, there are bad apples, there are bad mistakes made within those organisations. But Lord, they daily give of their lives. And I just want to ask that you would uphold them, that you would protect them. I would pray against some of the stupidity that we hear and see in the news and the media and from excessive pressure groups, Lord. And I pray instead that we would support these people who seek to bless and to help. And that as a church, we seek to support them in a spiritual way, upholding them in prayer, helping them when they're facing real difficult times. So Lord, we ask you to bless them, to keep them, to watch over them. And we ask that we as a church continue to pray and support them in a way that honours you and blesses them. We thank you for them in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. My brothers and sisters in Christ, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. In the name of Christ, amen. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia.